Hello and welcome to the show, everyone. I am your host, Brigitte Limbanda. It's time for the Writer's Corner Live. On the Writer's Corner Live show, we share the backstories from our authors, and today is no exception. So welcome, everyone. I'm your host, Brigitte Limbanda, and I am going to introduce our awesome author for today. Um, on the Writer's Corner live show, what we do is we share the backstories from our authors. And today our author is Catherine. And um, I'm going to waste no time to bring Catherine onto the show because there's no other person that better positioned to introduce herself than Catherine herself. Catherine is also one of the um, Alts authors. We've been interviewing over the last couple of weeks a number of the Alzheimer's um, authors, and she'll talk a little bit about that as well. So Catherine is a business professional turned artist. She wrote and illustrated her debut book called Weeds in Nana's Garden in 2016. And what prompted her to write this book was to help children understand what dementia is about. And it's difficult enough for adults to wrap their heads around uh, dementia and how that affects them. And so she was compelled because she had children herself. She wanted to write something that would allow children to relate to dementia and since its publication her book won several awards and was translated into multiple languages in 2018 she collaborated with dementia care expert Jacqueline Gwinnett and I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly to launch another book which is called I Smile for Grandpa so both of her children's books encourage children to remain connected to family members that have dementia and also supports the Alzheimer Society of Canada. So I'm going to waste no further time but to introduce you to Catherine. Hello. Hi, Catherine, and a warm welcome to the show. How are you today? Um, I'm fine, thank you. So exciting to see <laughs> your your video entry and all those other authors. I'm very thrilled to be here. To be among that group is a real pleasure. Yes, it absolutely is. So before we get started, you are also one of the ladies involved with Alts Authors. Yes. So before we get into your book and the story of your book, which I'd love to hear more about, how did you get involved with Alts Authors? And tell us a little bit, just very briefly, what Alts Authors is about for those who have not heard about it yet. Sure. So allsauthors.com. It's an online web. It's a, a website, which is actually a collection of books and resources about Alzheimer's and dementia. I, we have the largest comprehensive collection of memoirs, uh, caregiver guides, books about living with dementia, books for children and books for teens. And I started to get involved with all's authors because I was um, invited to participate in their online blog. And the blog that's part of the site has, similar to your Writer's Corner, actually has the story behind the story um, about books that are written about Alzheimer's and dementia. And, our, and I was so um, overwhelmed by what they were doing on this site, how positive it was, how necessary it is to help people who are caregiving or living with dementia to find resources that I, after I was part of it as a blogger, I asked if I could be involved and started to uh, use my design and illustration skills to bring um, some more visual interest and stuff to the site. So I'm, I'm the artistic director for the allsauthors.com site. And they're just, oh. a <laughs> sorry. Wonderful, wonderful. <laughs> 
And they're just all the, it's all volunteers. And I uh, started to interact first with Jean Lee, who's one of the founders and then uh, interacting with some of the other managers and everyone is just so passionate. And all of us uh, work so hard to do this. It was, they're just a pleasure to work with and they all have hearts of gold and energy like you wouldn't believe. So I um, was excited to help them. And then now I'm part of the team and I'm, uh, feeling good because we can continue our passion of getting resources into the people that need, in the hands of people that need it about Alzheimer's and dementia. That is awesome. So I want to dive right in, Catherine, and ask you about your own journey with dementia, and in particular, um, you know. So first of all, tell us tell us who it was in your family that had dementia, and tell us a little bit about how the book came about. Sure. So my mom actually had early onset dementia. Uh, she was diagnosed at 62. And it was this strange uh, parallel that was happening because the year that my mom was diagnosed, I had uh, my second child, my son. So, so you, I, you were pregnant or your baby was already born? Uh, we received the diagnosis two months after my son was born. But we... Right. Uh, as I think many people who are familiar with this journey know, we had suspected that my mom had some kind of dementia uh, for a long time. It was just finale in terms of this is what's going on. Um, and we didn't know the specific type of dementia. It was early, um, it was more rapid than many other journeys. So she changed quickly. Um, once she actually was passed away, we actually had um, an autopsy to determine what kind of dementia it was. And it was uh, frontal temporal degeneration dementia. So that is uh, a dementia that it changes a bit. It's typically a little bit faster in progress than Alzheimer's disease. And it affects primarily at the beginning your frontal lobe capacities, but it rapidly becomes very different. Uh, difficult to tell the difference between the dementias, which is why we couldn't actually get a firm diagnosis until after she passed away. So, so we, there was quite a rapid a rapid progression in her um, dementia. Oh, did I lose sound there? Um, for a second. Hold on a second. Okay. Was so was there quite a rapid uh, progression of her disease? Yes. Um, I mean, at the time, you don't really think about it that way. Uh, but when I look at it compared to other people that have been on the same journey, um, from diagnosis to the end of her journey was seven years. So that's wow. relatively quick, because it can go from about, that's about on the shortest side, it's typically more like 10 to 15 years. So it was a faster change, which like anything, it's not good or bad. It's just different than someone who might have a longer journey. Change was rapid. Um, it, but it was interesting because I had my children growing, which everyone that has children knows, children grow up very quickly and change rapidly. It was a very interesting parallel to have my children changing and growing rapidly while my mom progressed through dementia rapidly. Um, but as a result of being in that position of having young children, I was a part-time stay-at-home mom and I had um, part-time help. So, and my mom and dad actually lived, I lived in Toronto and my mom and dad lived outside of the city. So I wasn't there daily, but I was there several times a, a week to visit mom. So I was like my, oh. my objective dad voice, I guess. So what I want to know is your children were still pretty young and so they kind of didn't know grandparents what they were like prior to the dementia, right? Yeah. Um, so what was it that made you, I'm just trying to ask because your children didn't know any, anything different. In other words, they didn't see their grandparents change into someone they didn't know. What was it that made you want to write this book to help children better understand the disease? Uh, 
they as, as even though they didn't know my mom as a healthy whenever before the disease they knew their their grandfather and they knew their grandparents on their father on their my husband's side they also knew their friends grandparents so right. they they knew that their nana was not like other grandparents um right. so, so they could tell the difference mm -hmm, because she uh participated with them in different ways uh she was uh, excited about things sometimes that adults weren't excited about. Um, she, she, you know, forgot things that adults normally don't forget. She mixed things up. Uh, so it was obvious to them that her, their Nana was different. Uh, so they experienced a different kind of relationship with her. I actually talk about how it was a really, a, sometimes it was a really amazing pairing because my, young children were accepting of her because they didn't have the comparison. They, that was just who she was. So they were more accepting of her as someone who uh, might wear something inappropriate, like want to walk, go for a walk with us and not want to change out of her pajamas that didn't matter to them. Um, so they were I more- I think she must have been like a cool granny from that perspective. Right, she was a bit more carefree and spontaneous. Um, she would dance to, um, I know that many people that have a dementia journey know how important music is. Uh, so music for my mom was so huge. And my kids had, you know, you have music on your their toys and there's music around a lot. And a lot of times when you have little kids, you play like songs like Twinkle Twinkle Little Star and some of the old familiar, so my mother would sing those really loud because she would know them. And the kids were like, hey, this is cool. Like someone's <laughs> actually dancing and singing to this music. So yeah, they, they um, and they weren't, for me, they weren't, they were kind of like my support because they were just like going with it. And I, I still remember my daughter telling me, don't, it doesn't matter what Nana wears when we go for a walk. Like, and I, you know, it's like, yeah, why am I worried about it? So that, I guess, was, I re really found them helpful to have as part of our, our team. So did having your children kind of help you um, write how to deal with it? And what are the angles that you use in the book to help children come to understand dementia? Yeah, um, it, I actually have to give kudos where kudos is due. And the whole idea for Weeds in Nana's Garden was from my daughter, who was seven, um, when she and I were, my mom had a beautiful garden, huge garden. It was in garden I was going to ask you, where did the name <laughs> Weeds in Nana's Garden come from? But I think you kind of will weave that into your answer now. Yes, so my mom had a massive garden. Um, when she progressed, it started to fail and nobody was caring for the garden. It was kind of the last thing to worry about. But because it was such a big place and uh, so well made, I guess, there was still lots of blooms in the garden. So we would walk in the garden and always pick bouquets. Um, my mom was always uh, of the mindset that if you had gar flowers in the garden, you should pick them so you can enjoy them in your home. So we would walk in the garden. Um, one day we walked in the garden with my daughter and there was weeds in the garden too. And um, after we picked a bouquet and we were in the house arranging it, my mom uh, was, I think she was just not in the room, but so my daughter was in the room and she made the observation, mom, it was harder to find the flowers. Like there's not as many flowers in the garden anymore. And I said, yes, it's true. And, and then I had the opportunity then to kind of talk about what was happening and the changes and that her grandfather was busy with um, looking mm -hmm. after Nana more. And I had uh, an opportunity to talk a little bit about that it was a disease in her brain that was changing her. And it was my daughter that made the connection, she said. So Nana's brain has something growing in it and it's affecting how she can mem remember. And I said, yeah, that's sort And she's like, it's like the weeds in the garden that are hiding. Wow. Oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. How perceptive of her. Yes. How old was she at the time? She was seven. 
And I but said, very perceptive. Very, wow. Right. So it was, that was like, what? Wow. <laughs> yes, that is exactly a way to describe it. And it was that moment that I, I knew I had a book. I knew I had an idea for a book. And I'd already wanted to write a book because I felt that I like stories when you're, when kids are seven, you know, five, six, seven, stories can so help you, um, help you explain things to your children and help them understand. And I found very limited books at that time. So that was really a, an aha moment for me. So what age um, is that book aimed at? Uh, it's sort of a six to nine year old would be the sweet spot. Um, so, cause it's a picture book. So still interested in reading picture books uh, uh, and it's a sort of sort of a poetry poetic style to rhythmic style uh, of reading and pretty descriptive um, and also really what well, I like to say a candid discussion about it so a lot of the books that I found um, before I wrote this book they kind of tippy toed a little bit around it. And because we had this beautiful metaphor of the brain being affected the way weeds affect a garden, um, we the book actually talks about it so that it has a, you know, a visual representation of what is happening in the brain and explains it so that it um, goes beyond just that she's got this and actually tries to explain what, what that means. Oh, that's phenomenal. That's phenomenal. And did you write the book while your mum was still alive or did you write the book after she had passed? I did write it afterwards. So I had the idea, a general story, and then I wrote it after she passed. So in 2010 um, and um, had lots of time to work on it, as you know, from the writer's corner. Uh, the process took a long time to get it together. <laughs> How long did it take you to write the book? And did you find that the book was therapeutic in a sense for you? Oh, yes. Uh, so six years <laughs> it took from uh, my mom passing to publishing it. And yes, definitely therapeutic. And sometimes almost so emotional, I didn't, I couldn't work on it. <laughs> um, but I did have an amazing thing happen to me, which is my children were continuing to grow and I shared what was happening with my children's teachers and with also some teachers that I knew. And I was invited into two classrooms of grade four. So they were nine year olds. And we took the book, which was in its preliminary stage. And I shared it with them. And we had huge long discussions with all these, you know, 39 year olds. Some of them had experience with dementia. Some of them had no experience with dementia. And we worked through the book actually as a group. Um, and that really solidified where I was going to go. Um, and there are so many questions. And um, it was as a result of those two sessions that I decided to put questions and answers in the back of the book that are specifically identified by what the children were asking me about dementia. I think that's wonderful because, you know, children are by their very nature, very inquisitive. And so they have questions. And so if you can, you know, have a QA, and a um, I think that's extremely valuable. So how did you go from Weeds and Nana's Garden to I Smile for Grandpa? And what is essentially the difference between the two stories? Sure. So when um, once I published Weeds and Nana's Garden, it, uh I, I guess it was about a year later, I was approached by a lot of people. Well, actually, the first thing that everyone I said after I published Weeds in Nana's Garden is, when are you going to do a book for a grandfather figure? So it seemed like, yeah, because obviously it, a lot of individuals are grandparents. You've got the grandfather and the grandmother. So that was kind of like right off the bat. When is that book coming? When is that book coming? Yeah. Um, and I, I was busy with this one, but then Jacqueline, um, who is actually a dementia care expert, she's a social worker and she works in uh, care homes in Edmonton, uh, um, Alberta, which is also in Canada, but long way away, you know, like hours away from here. Uh, she approached me um, through email and said, I've got a, a book idea. Um, 
And so she sent me her draft manuscript and it was bang on. And so we worked together for the next year and a half. And um, I did the illustrations with her and we created this other book. The focus was to make not only a book for a, a grandfather figure, but one of the key feedbacks about um, Weeds in Anna's Garden is everyone would love to have a book that is even more culturally diverse and accepted so that people of diverse cultures and backgrounds find the book is the right book for them. And I've had Weeds in Anna's Garden translated into Portuguese and German um, and French. Uh, so I know there's a global need for the book. So what Jacqueline and I decided with this book is to make it um, animal figures rather than people figures so that it is a wider range. Mm. Yeah, so, that so So I've got a question for you. Many people have gone through journeys like these in their life. Um, and every one of us has got a book in them. And, you know, I am intending to write a book about my journey. I've been through so many journeys with people in my life that I've cared about tremendously um, and significantly my late mom-in-law and more recently my dad. And like you, you know, my dad's just recently passed and I am, I, I've started writing down my thoughts and, and, you know, little details that I know I don't want to forget, but I'm not ready. I'm just not ready. So how did you get to the point of, I need to write the story and I'm going to write the story. How did you make the transition to put pen to paper? Hmm. Um, I, I think it was because I felt like there was such a need, such an open need to share my story um, because I was actually, you know what it was? When I was telling people about my idea, people were always like, oh, well, kids don't need to know about dementia. Oh, just, they don't need to know, you know? And they, I kept encountering experiences where people wanted to shield the children and not talk about it. And and I guess I felt so strongly that that wasn't the, the way for, for me and that wasn't the way for our family. And it helped us so much to have the kids involved and be open and be part of it that I wanted to do, do something to not have that happen, to, to change the perspective. Yeah, I think that is in, extremely important. You know, people sometimes forget. Yesterday, um, I was doing a, a broadcast um, and we accidentally spoke about death and dying. And it's, it's one of those things, you know, when it comes to diseases, illnesses, death and dying, a lot of people feel that the children should be shielded and somehow um, children are excluded and they they're not part of the process. Yes. And I'm a great believer that we shouldn't ex exclude the children because, you know, they wonder what's happening as well. Children intuitively know that something is not 100% right. And children have a harder time translating what they're thinking or feeling into words and may cause inner conflict. But if you can help them express and understand, um, it makes for better family life. And so I think what you did is amazing. Thank you. I, you know, it was a, of an emotional journey. I actually, like, all candid side, like, I actually had times where I was crying while I was creating the drawings uh, because they they were reflecting my mom and my daughter's relationship. So it was emotional. But take your time. You know, don't. It's okay. And actually, when it's emotional, then I think what you're creating is more real and authentic, and it will speak out from that. But it is a painful process sometimes. What, was, what or who was your support in helping you hold it together so that you could plan and, and write the book? Um, back to those kids of mine. <laughs> they, they believed it was important to for them they you know they were um they were the biggest support and actually my husband was a huge support like all of and my dad has <laughs> no i i know some writers um have had you know people not wanting to share it and not wanting to um you know show the story to the world but i didn't have that i had my dad really excited that 
that something would good would happen from mom's experience and my kids would be like come on mom and they were my critics and so it was a family affair like the disease is a family affair it was a family affair to to give birth to this book as a result of it and it's like a tribute to my mom so yeah I think that would probably be the key focus is focusing on the fact that it's a tribute to someone that you've lost and it's a way of um, sharing what you had and and a way of for your children to later look back and you know this is the this is the story of their nana um, yeah. you know you've got a legacy that you've basically left behind for your children now yeah, and it's not anything to be ashamed of. Um, it's just, a, it's the story of how we handled it and and then translating that into helping others. Um, it's, the, it's the best thing I could do for me and for us uh, in our family after what my mom had to go through. So, yes. So Catherine, for anyone that is finding themselves in a situation where they they're just newly getting diagnosed with dementia, you know, a parent, for example. What is your advice for them? Um, to know that uh, it, there's going to be amazing things that come out of it. Um, there's going to be, it's not the end of anything. Seize the moment. Uh, accept that it's happening, don't hide from it, and you will uh, have amazing moments of connection in a different way. It's going to change things, but it's going to bring things that together that you've never had experienced. My One of my favorite stories is my mom, because, you know, I already mentioned she had an award-winning garden. She had actually ran a bed and breakfast. So, uh, and uh, so her home was always perfectly decorated. And at Christmas, it was perfectly decorated. Um, but one year, about maybe three years into it, um, we were all decorating the tree. And my mom kind of got a little excited and started throwing the decorations literally on the tree, like just pitching them <laughs> on the tree. And uh, my, I mean, my six-year-old son at the time, he looks at mom he looks at the stuff and he's like oh, and he takes he starts throwing stuff on too like not breakable stuff but just like ribbons and um <laughs> you know, and, it was, and it was like all of us started doing it and then we all stepped back and we're like hey it looks kind of cool like that, <laughs> that was so fun and mom would never have done that like it was it was something I know it sounds like Kind of, out of character, um, yeah. Yeah, it was just, but it was like a, it, it freed us. And by accepting that the moment and living in that moment, yeah, you get um, these experiences that you may never have gotten otherwise. So, and we yeah. had lots of shares of those. I mean, if I look at you, the joy in your eyes just telling me that, it created a moment that you will forever remember. It'll be part of your family's legacy. It was a defining moment. Yes. Catherine, where can people find Weeds in Nana's Garden and A Smile for Grandpa? Uh, they're on all online retailers, but Amazon and Barnes and Nobles. Um, or you can visit weedsinnanasgarden.com and that website uh, is the website for the book. And on there, there is a listing of all the sites that it, where it's for sale at. So, yeah. Fantastic. Catherine, so, thank you so much for sharing your story. Thank you for sharing a piece of your family's story and history. And thank you for writing your books to help children understand Thanks. what dementia is all about. It was fun having you on the show. Thank you so, so very much. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And thanks for everyone for listening and tuning in and hearing us. Thanks. It's a big pleasure. Thank you for joining us, everyone. And goodbye for now. Bye.